All right, so I'm still debating on whether or not I'll actually do this video. <laughs> but, um, so I just started my practice session. I've done a brief breathing exercise and I've done mouthpiece stuff and I just played my first note. Now, obviously I'm playing my E flat horn, but just assume that I'm playing a B flat horn, okay? Because I do the same exact stuff. I don't do anything different. I just start on a different pitch. So instead of starting on B flat for my Remington whole notes, ta, 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 right? Instead of doing that, or ta, di, da, ta, de, da, ta, de, da, ta, de, da, da, de, da, right? I start on E flat instead of B flat, but the fingers are the same. So just imagine I'm playing a B flat horn. Other than that, I do nothing different on this one. Okay, I do nothing different. Um, okay, so I've done a brief breathing exercise where I went in four, out four, four times, and then I did a sigh. So I'll, I'll do that for you and we'll just start from the beginning. Okay, so I just got my horn plugged in. Now this is the very beginning of my practice session. Okay. And then from here on out, I'm just gonna do what I normally do. Okay, so you can see how I incorporate elements of recovery and different techniques that don't involve stuff being on my face, but I'm still engaged in the material of the practice session, okay? Especially now, because I'm practicing some really high stuff, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, all right, so just keep in mind, how do I incorporate recovery? And what do I do that's still practicing, still engaging with the material, but is not necessarily horn on the face, right? Just a side note, that's an E flat. Da -da -da. If I was playing a B flat horn, I'd start on da da, that'd be a B flat, right? So da, starting on E flat. But just imagine it's B flat. to long term.
Tuning slides out, so that's what we're doing here. Notice too, right? I'm not rushing to do this. Right? Give them the face time. Right? I know I literally just played, but even though I just played, you know, I still use my face. And this gives my face just enough time to sort of be fresh again. So now I'm gonna move on to my next thing. out of tune there but I'm just gonna move on <laughs> I don't typically worry with tuning um, unless it's really a particular passage that I notice like that I, I probably wouldn't worry about it the reality there I think I'll just stop for a brief aside to explain myself I'm trying not to do that much because it's not important but um, the reality of that is I don't think I was centered on the partial and I'm still getting used to the horn this is my first time playing today. So, I mean, I, I played with some of the students at the high school today, but I, I didn't do any warm up or anything, right? This is the first time I'm coming to the horn. So I'm trying not to worry too much about the particulars. If I'm not unhappy, if I'm unhappy with my performance, I'll just do it again, right? Which you saw me do here a few times, right? So I'll just do it again. And you know, if it's not perfect, it's not the end of the world. You know, I'm not done with warm up. So I don't have any standards right now. <laughs> the standards are aside, warm up or just to get all the mistakes out and, and just sort of come back to the horn without worry of repercussion or judgment or any sort of that. No, that's ridiculous. It's not time for that. It's time for me to just uh, sort of reintroduce myself to the horn. Yeah. All right, continuing on.
I should say too that like, this is really how I practice. <laughs> I should have said that at the start, but like, I don't know if you can tell, but it's pretty leisure, you know? I, uh, like, I suppose you could say that I, I don't have the anxiety of assignments coming up or anything like that. And I'm not in crunch time for an audition or anything or a performance, but even when I was in crunch time for performances, I don't hurry. I don't let that interject into the sound of my playing because if you have a hurried sound it's not going to be very fun to listen to right so what's up here comes out of here too <laughs> you know um, i like to think that half of performance of any kind whether it's sports music art or anything in between um, is actually psychological the physical side kind of just takes care of itself because we're all human we're all built um, generally the same like 99.9 percent .9 the same <laughs> you know uh, anyhow continuing on and that was just to get my ear back into the key. checking myself <laughs> I, was, I was thinking i was too low on partials but no we're, we're good flexibility exercise or not. Uh, no. Let's move on. Thank you. 
trying these. <laughs> I'll show you what it, what's written. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see it. But all I'm doing is I'm reading this one line where it says number one. Okay, number one, it's, it's... Oh, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> number one, see handwritten right here, right? So that little line, these first two lines up here, that's all number one. I'm just reading that. It's in, uh, it's in treble clef, but um, I'm reading it starting in the key of E flat, then going to the key of D, then going to the key of D flat, C, C flat, etc., etc. So if I'm stopping, it's because I'm messing up the fingerings and I'm figuring it out, right? <laughs> so uh, that's a neat little exercise, but uh, don't worry about that. Just if you were curious, that's the reason why I'm redoing it, because I'm having trouble figuring out what the notes are. <laughs> and yeah, happens very often. So that would be E flat, D, D flat, C. I just did C flat, now I'll do B flat, okay? And then I'll stop there. Anyhow, keep in mind, we're looking for recovery, right? Recovery, and the other thing. What was the other thing I said? The other, oh, recovery and methods that I use that aren't necessarily to do with playing, right? So that might be like breathing. How often do I breathe? Um, how loud do I play? Right? Things to keep in mind. All right, here we go. I'll do some brief articulation practice. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
this one tires me out the most out of all of my daily warm-up. <laughs> so I try really hard not to strain on this one because it goes relatively high. It goes all the way up to high C. That's the one, the first lot, first ledger above the staff, right? And that's only on E flat horn, right? On B flat horn, we go up to high G, one and two G, but my one and two is C, right? So I'm trying to get my mind suited to the horn, right? So when I do this on E flat, I really try to give my lips lots of rest. Like I can already feel them now, you know? So, all right, we'll continue. I generally take less than 30 minutes, 30 minutes or less for my daily routine. It's just what I find to be practical for the amount of time that I have. I used to take 45 minutes for a daily routine. To some of the people, that's a lot. <laughs> um, but I don't know, it's just what felt right for me while I was at the university, um, while I had the pleasure of time. Now, unfortunately, I have less time. I, have, I practice about an hour a day, solid practice. 30 minutes of that is daily routine. So, sort of looking at the time here, considering whether or not I want to do an exercise. Um, I think I'll move on to multiple tonguing instead of the usual. Um, usually I go through a few more different styles of tonguing, like staccato, marcato, um, portato, that sort of stuff. Um, but just the accent legato and normal are fine for now. Uh, I need a bell. Here we go. Actually, I'll just pick up my own.
I appreciate the note about the water faucet. <laughs> spend too much time so we'll move on to repertoire now like I said I'm practicing some pretty high stuff at this point um, so yeah you'll just sort of just just watch me I probably won't speak much after this um, but just watch me and try to see man that passage was really high I mean do I just go right back into it maybe sometimes maybe not you know and then try to figure out maybe you know well, why what's the reason or is there a specific reason for that or do I think he just messed up and wanted to try it again you know just try to analyze with your own mind and then maybe we can have a, a talk back later okay so here we go and now I gotta decide what movement I want to practice <laughs> I think I'll do I know these notes, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm hearing these notes, like we talked about previously. This is the issue, or the issue. <laughs> that's the benefit of singing, is that you get familiar with the music and you can portray it in your head before you ever play it, so that it just comes out. <laughs> exercise in. This is an exercise in hearing the notes. Good? Not too bad. Mm -hmm. 
beginning there just to explain a little bit I start at the top of this phrase the reason why I did that is because I conceptualize the whole phrase as one unit once I, I just repeat these little motives over and over and over again it's hard for me to hear them because I lose the context right so then I go back to reestablish the context in my mind and then as you just noticed it was much more accurate right so I'll maybe do that a few more times Moving on. 
distracted here, right? That's what you're seeing. Nope. Nope. Phone's telling me we're in low power mode. Now, too, my fingers are starting to become tired, so now I'm going to sort of move on and do something else. It's not too bad. There's still some pitch issues in the interval section. That's 
the A flat above the staff. That's what no I'm trying to hit there. It's just giving me trouble, man. <laughs> general I give sort of comments on my playing this far um, this piece is hard <laughs> no excuses then it's really hard but if you can hear it you can play it and that's all today's practice session is really about is just hearing this stuff so taking this high stuff down an octave um, playing it really slowly, playing it in different styles, that sort of thing. Anything that can help me get it into my ear, get into my ear the pitches that I'm supposed to be playing. Because if I don't know what pitches I'm supposed to be playing and I just squeeze my lips together, there are a million different partials up there when you're that high, right? I mean, imagine, like, when you go for high B flat, sometimes you hit that A flat, that false tone right below it, right? It's not actually a false tone, but we call it a false tone because it's not, it's not in tune, right? It's just terribly out of tune. Um, you know, you go for that high B flat and you're too low, you know, and, um, so you'll hit the A flat. Well, as you get higher and higher, that, that problem only gets worse. <laughs> it's not just A flat that you can do that with. You can do it with the D above the staff, with the E flat above the staff, with the E above the staff, with the F. I mean, all that stuff up there is just, just a glissandi of missed partials. So if you're not hearing it, once you're playing up there, there's just no hope, you know, so you got to hear what you're playing before you can play it. Okay, back to it. Ooh, 5% battery on the iPad. Hopefully it lasts 15, five more minutes, uh, 15 minutes rather. All right. Yeah. Yeah, see right there, I just can't. is exhausted because <laughs> I'm just like I'm barely able to hit that that a flat above the star <laughs> 
See, it's just not there. You know, it's just not there. So there's no sense in me trying to play it. Right? And this is where you kind of have to just admit defeat sometimes. Like right now, I, I have to shift my gear. Right? I, I can't try to hear and, and practice hearing and playing those high notes anymore. I can't do it. It's just going to tear my armature more and more and more. So at this point, I'm going to make a conscious decision to take stuff down an octave if I need to. That's anything below an F above the staff. Right? Anything above an F above the staff, I just take it down the octave or I just won't play it. Right? If the line is, is it's necessary for the line for it to be that high, then I just won't play that line. I'll just skip it. Right? I'll just go to the next phrase. So anyhow, yeah. And now we get to practice some fingerings. I misremember that. Da 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 di da da di da ba da di da pi ba di di ba di da ba da da di pi da di da da di. Da 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 di da ba di da pi da da di da di. Easy. <laughs> Hear and then win. It's a practice time, one, two. I suppose in general, I could say my motto is be picky, but don't be perfect. Because <laughs> it's just not all gonna happen in one session. It's just unrealistic. There's no reason to impose that on ourselves. Remember what is in here, come out here, right? So if you're super demeaning and annoying to yourself that's what you're going to sound like to the audience and, and they'll pick up it might not sound the exact same emotion but it just won't be pure you know so all right we'll keep going Thank <laughs> you. 
Actually, 10 minutes of practice. Up, so. Here you go. That's really rough. There's <laughs> some rough fingering passages in here.
exercise where I only play the notes that I have fourth valve activated on because <laughs> the fourth valve was causing me the trouble with the alignment of this passage here but I don't think it's worth my time. flat partial but I'm wanting F E flat F E flat E flat so which is high C for this horn it's the C above the staff for this horn so it's that first valve C which is about high B flat and you can play B flat with it too which is what I'm experiencing so I'm not hearing it right and I'm not preparing and I'm just playing right, without any thought then that's what happens Check the time one more time. Cool, I want to go back from the beginning now. Thank <laughs> you. 
Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so this is just the first section of the verse movement. Um, it, it does go on and ha it has a little B theme that goes on like this. So cool. We'll take one more run in the section that I worked today and then I'll pack up and uh, get ready for work. that's what a practice session for me looks like now today my main goal was technicality there are a lot of things that you haven't seen that I've done with this piece I've practiced this piece many times before um, I'm recently picking it back up so I know what the piece sounds like I've listened to lots and lots and lots of recordings I've listened to this a lot um, I've known this piece for about a year or so um, and yeah, plus I really like the piece, so it's easy to play, it's fun, right? Um, so there's a lot of things that, that you haven't seen, but you know, feel free to scroll back into the video and, and just sort of listen and, and um, critique me on, you know, how could I, maybe maybe I could do my recovery better, you know? Maybe, maybe I'm just too hasty at playing some of these high notes, and that's probably true. You know, you have to remember nobody's perfect, right? Especially not me, like, not at all. But I hope that give you some, gives you some ideas about how recovery can kind of be taken into mind um, during a practice session. And uh, I hope I did a decent job. <laughs> and uh, yeah, anyhow, cool. Um, text me and we can set up a call if you'd like and maybe we can have a short talk back over this video. Um, other than that, cool. Oh, the piece is uh, Concertino for tuba and orchestra. In, uh, uh, by Eugene Botza. He's a French French composer, um, mid 1900s, and uh, copyright date is 1967 on it. So there you go. Um, this is originally written for a uh, a C a French tuba in C, which has six valves, and it's a euphonium that plays with a tuba mouthpiece. So the reason why a lot of this stuff is so high is because it's actually written for a euphonium range instrument. It's not written for the tuba. Um, anyhow. 
So, well, it's not written for our tuba. It's written for the French tuba, which you can, you know, research that all you want. Um, but yeah, uh, Eugene Blotz's Concertino for Tuba. Um, wonderful, wonderful composer, wonderful piece of music. Uh, go listen to it. It's fun. Anyhow, uh, talk soon.